Thank you so much, and welcome to church on such a beautiful and important Sunday. We're so glad that you're here. We're going to start our service right now by singing our opening chant, Blessing to the World. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Told you I would be back. <laughs> welcome, and welcome to all of those who are joining us via Facebook Live and Zoom. We're so glad you're with us. I do have to tell you, I did like waking up Thursday morning and checking things off my not to do list. <laughs> Ah, okay, with that, let's join together in prayer. <laughs> and so as we turn our attention inward in this moment, and just feeling the vibration of this holiday today, that idea of independence and freedom, that freedom that produces such joy, fulfillment. And to know that that vibration is a vibration of God. Because truly, God is the only life, the one power, the one infinite invisible out of which everything in this manifest universe comes into being, and that lives in through and as all that is, including each and every one of us gathered for the service this morning. I know that we are filled and surrounded by that love of God that we can feel so tangibly as we come together as a community, whether virtually or in person. We so honor and appreciate that vibration of love that flows through everyone who is of service today. I know that spirit is flowing through our musicians through Sam, through Bob, and through our soloist Dean this morning, uplifting us, inspiring us. And I absolutely know we hear the perfect word of the divine through Dr. Mark. That Dr. Mark has said yes to spirit, yes to being that vessel through which we hear exactly what we need to hear to awaken to the truth of our divine nature and to experience and express it more fully in our lives. And so how grateful I am for all the healing and revealing that occurs throughout this service. In gratitude for it all, I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is, and together we say, Amen. Part of me. 
And so now, please rise and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So now let's join in our congregational hymn, God Bless America. <laughs> Well, thank you. <laughs> Please be seated. Sorry. Okay, so this is the time where we're going to spend a few minutes, five minutes exactly, in meditation. So I'm going to invite you now to just get nice and still in your chairs to just take a nice deep breath with me. And as we release that breath, Let's close our eyes, turn our attention inward, and for the next five minutes, I invite you to silently repeat the mantra, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. Just silently repeat that over and over, and I'll bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesty. Thank you, Dean. Thank you so much, Sam, Bob. Good morning. Happy Fourth of July weekend. Um, when I hear patriotic music, I love patriotic music. I always have. Um, I think it's because when I was a little kid, when, when uh, my brother and sister and I were little, and we'd be in the car with my dad. My dad didn't know a lot of music or a lot about music, but he knew patriotic songs. And so we were always singing from the halls of Montezuma and the Battle Hymn of the Republic and you know all those songs that guys who were in the Second World War knew. That was my dad's contribution to our musical education. Um, but I realized as I got older, I really liked 
uh, patriotic music because I had this wonderful association of being a little boy with my father, and we'd be in the car and we'd all be singing from the halls of Montezuma, you know, and, and, and I realize now that he was actually kind of brilliant about it. Because you know how kids are in the back seat of the car, you start arguing and wrestling and fighting, and he hit me first, and she touched my leg, she touched me, you know, and it just goes on and on and on. And, and my dad was smart, that when we would do this, he would say, everybody, let's sing. <laughs> and so we'd all start with from, you know, the halls of Montezuma or whatever it was. My dad was in the Army Air Corps before there was an Air Force. And so uh, that was a, a fun, just a really fun uh, part of growing up. Uh, because it's Fourth of July weekend, I realized I had to, I owed you a little joke here. So here we go. Um, one of the things that is unique to America is country music. Yeah. Country music, this is an, a, an organic to the United States of America. So I'd like to share a couple of country song titles that are some of my favorites of all time. Get your tongue out of my mouth because I'm kissing you goodbye. <laughs> yeah. How can I miss you if you won't go away? Um, I keep forgetting I forgot all about you. I like that one. I liked you better before I knew you so well. <laughs> I still miss you, baby, but my aim's getting better. <laughs> huh? All right. That's good. Um, I'm so miserable without you, it's like having you here. <laughs> I've got tears in my ears from lying on my back and crying. These are real songs, I'm telling you. These are real titles. <laughs> uh, if I had shot you when I wanted to, I'd be out by now. That's a popular one. <laughs> my wife ran off with my best friend, and I sure do miss him. Uh, uh, perhaps I'll end with this one. She got the ring, and I got the finger. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> all, right, all right, all right, we gotta have one more. That was a bad note to end on. The last one. If the phone don't ring, you'll know it's me. Huh? I like that, okay. So I love in the United States of America that our symbol is the eagle, what we call the bald eagle or the American eagle. What a great symbol for our country. And I have read that Ben Franklin actually wanted our symbol to be the pelican. I think it would be a very different story if we had gone with the pelican. They are not the same. You know, the pelican has that big uh, jaw that can hold a whole fish. Yeah, just a very different uh, animal. So here we are, 4th of July, 2021. Our country is 221 years old. That means that this idea of democracy is only 221 years old. It's still a fairly new idea. Democracy is in its infancy, and I think so often we expect it to be a fully-fledged, perfectly expressed idea, and yet I think we're still figuring it out. One of the things that I think is so extraordinary about the United States of America is that this very idea of a democracy where um, all men are created equal. Hear that, where all men, all beings, all men, women, and children are created equal. This idea is still in progress. We haven't got it perfectly, but you know, this idea of a nation by and for, a government by and for the people could only happen someplace where there was not a monarchy. And at the time, 221 years ago, the big countries in the world all had monarchies, right? So this idea of democracy could only happen someplace where there was not a king or a queen, where there had not been a king or had not been a queen before. Because, you know, if you live under a monarchy, you are essentially, um, you know, you're the subjects of the king and the queen. Your individual rights are not important. But this is what our founding fathers knew, that there was value in every individual. Remember, even before the signing of the Declaration of Independence, people went to church and they, they were not much. That's what they had been told. Who you are is not much. But when you die, you'll get your reward in heaven. And Jesus, for them, was the great exception to the rule, not the example. 
So what happens in America is this idea comes forward, really, of Jesus being the great example of what we may become ourselves. That what he had in potential exists in us in potential, and it's waiting to be brought forth in expression. And how we do that is through our actions, through our words, through how we are in the world. So I think it's really an extraordinary thing uh, that the idea of democracy, where all people are equal, where everyone has value. See, up, up until this, the value you had was that you were a subject of the king or the queen. Your, what your opinion, what you wanted, did not matter at all. So how extraordinary that this idea would start here. Not unlike that new thought, uh, our teaching, Science of Mind, really took off here in Southern California, you know, where there had not been, there, there were certainly lots of churches here, but Ernest felt like something was missing from the church experience, that people would go to church and they'd hear something, but it didn't give them the tools to improve the quality of their life experience. And he said, you know, he says, I, I think that God's more loving than that. I think that we have some input into this equation. Um, so I think one of the things we do as uh, students in this philosophy is that we always have a vision for ourselves. Like it says in the scripture, where there is no vision, the people will perish, right? So we trust that we have a vision for our life that is more than just getting by. I believe we want to thrive, not just survive. This is my pitch now for the Abundance Workshop that will begin on Tuesday night at 7 for 8.30 online. Uh, that people came here to, to thrive, to really live the life abundant, right? And so how do we get to that? Well, a thriving outer life, an outer life that we say works, whatever that is, is I know it's different for everyone, is the outpicturing of the thing that we hold most dear in consciousness, or it's a reflection of the inner life that we maintain most of the time. I think we have to consistently make the most out of every moment. This makes for a far better future. It really does. So what do I mean by that? That bring the best of you, the best of your consciousness, the best qualities and attributes of your personality into every moment. Be the person you like. Be the person you feel good about. Be the person you've always said you wanted to be. And the time to do that is any time between now and right now. This is the time to be that consciousness. See, God gives us incredible freedom when you think about it. You know, and we get to ask, what do I want for my life? Now, this is not true of everyone everywhere. Remember, there are still large parts of the planet where people's lives are absolutely at a level of struggle that we could not even comprehend. I saw something on BBC World News the other day that was so disturbing in Ghana where people are so poor, they are willing to sell their children for two years into a job fishing. The problem is those children never come home. And they say that there are over 20,000 children now who are missing who are actually enslaved in doing this fishing work on, on this big lake in Ghana. And I think, wow, for the most part, we don't have to think about things like that, right? For the most part. I know we're still, we're still concerned about those things, but those things are not what we're dealing with on a daily, daily basis. And I see something like that, and what it does is it makes me so grateful for the life I have for the fact that, by and large, our children are fairly safe. You know that God gives us incredible freedom, though. Right? So here, here's the spiritual principle. What mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. Right? So if I can conceive of a greater good, if I can conceive of having healing in my body, and I can start to believe that, I can absolutely achieve that. Right? So what can you imagine? Right? But it's not just the imagining. I think you have to believe that it can be so for you. You know, you know there's, there's a difference between daydreaming that's kind of pointless and not going anywhere, and that visualizing where we're certain that God has in its infinite mind a greater good for each and every one of us. So I think that imagination has, has a place here. You've got to be able to imagine the life you desire, the healing you desire, the relationship you desire, the abundance that you desire. If you can't see it, it's not going to happen for you because the way it happens for all of us is it happens through us, through our mental receptivity, right? Why? Because your beliefs, your thoughts, your attitudes are keeping you right where you are. But the great news is your beliefs, your thoughts, and your attitudes will also take you up to the next level. Come on, think of... What I think we all have to do is everybody needs to think a little bit better of themselves. To think more, and what I mean by that is not in that 
arrogant, self-inflated way, but where you are, who you are, what you are, is you are God's holy temple. God, the spirit of the living God, resides within you. And so that's, that's not chump change, is it? That's, that's like the best, the highest and best there is, is right where we are. So we have to see it on the inside long before we ever express it on the outside. If you think you can or you think you can't, you're absolutely right. That's how spiritual law works. But let's be clear that the blockage is not in God. You know, the blockage, if we feel blocked, if we feel stuck, the blockage is in you, it's in me, our thinking, not in God. It is never that God can't do it. I mean, think about this. God, the infinite, always has a way. God, the infinite, can do absolutely anything. God has infinite resources. It is our thinking and believing that keeps a better life at arm's distance from us. And it will stay that way unless we change our consciousness, our believing, our thinking, our speaking. I trust you can see a greater good for yourself. And if you can't, take a moment now and see what's... What's God got on the horizon for me that's good? Oh, I'm going to have this healing in my body. Or I'm going to have a healing in a relationship. I'm going to move into a job that I like a little more. Whatever that may be for you, it may be something that's not physically tangible. It may be something more inner, like I'm going to have greater peace of mind. Or I'm going to be more compassionate in this situation here. See, it's our thinking and believing that keeps a better life at arm's distance from us. And so if we all know that there is in the mind of God, what I will call a greater yet to be. It's not here yet, but it exists in the infinite mind and it's waiting to come through us into expression. You have to conceive it, you have to give birth to the idea, to the possibility. The picture, I think, has to live inside of us, inside of our mind's eye. I think you've got to have, it on, have the image on the inside of life that you want to be living on the outside of life. That's it. The image I hold inside is the image I want to step into out here. It has to be a part of you. It is with you, I think, all the time. So when you have a minute during the day, do you see yourself living, uh, accomplishing, experiencing the life, the healing that you desire? And if not, now would be a really wonderful time to start to do that. I suspect for many of us, we will have to reprogram or do some reprogramming to our mind. It's, you know, because it's work to maintain a can-do attitude every single day. But wherever you, whatever it is that you keep in your mind's eye and see continually, I know that you are in the process of creating that. You are bringing that into form. Because we all know things exist in consciousness long before they show up out here in the world of form. So whatever you keep in your mind's eye and see continually, you will absolutely create that. If you foster that with thoughts of love and healing, if you foster thoughts of abundance, if you foster thoughts of happiness, ultimately you will experience them if you do not deviate. See, I think we fall into a rut so easily, and a rut is, is, is nothing but limited thinking. We were saying, it's not possible for me. So when you hear yourself say, oh, that's not possible, that's not available to me, you are in a rut. And you know what a rut is? A rut is a grave with both ends kicked out. That's what a rut is, yeah. So we all have to have a bigger vision than our past, right? Because our past is not a vision for the future. A past is a record of our history, right? Because if our past, particularly if, it, if there is our negativity there or limited thinking, to say this must be my life, uh, you know, that I'm going to have to deal with an illness, I'm going to have to deal with um, my education, I'm going to have to deal with the areas where I've made mistakes or feel like I failed. Only if you let that be your lot. Why would you? Why would you? We are all here to get rid of our small-minded error thinking, you know, and get your mind and heart on board here that you are the place where God expresses like no other. We want to make room in our mind for expansion to be in our life. The universe can only support you to where you are now with your current seeing and believing. And, and I know that we all seek to have a greater experience of God in our life, whether it's in our health or our relationships. So now, uh, but the universe cannot support us beyond our current level of belief, our current level of seeing. And your and certainly my incorrect, my error thinking prevents good from occurring in my life. So every time I'm off track with my thinking, when I catch myself, I try to say, you know, 
Is this thinking worth keeping? Because it's keeping my good away from me. And that's always really sobering to me when, I, when I'm able to catch myself, which I do get better at. See, because you can't have a larger life with old, small thinking. You know, we talk about this all the time. Your life won't change until you change your thinking and keep it changed. And I want all of us to get this. Without changing our consciousness, we're just trying to manipulate effects that are temporary at the best. You know, so God is infinite and we have not peaked. I don't care how old you are, you have not peaked. God is not done expressing by means of you, loving by means of you, creating by means of you. Life has an infinite capacity. The principle of life has an infinite capacity to be more, to include more. But we must make a welcome place in our thinking, in our consciousness. So my encouragement is that we start every day on the right foot that we are glad to be alive. You know, most people get up in the morning and say, oh, good God, morning. And I think we've got it backwards. We've got to say, good morning, God. It's going to be a great day because this is the day you've given me. I mean, I like that kind of approach. I remember uh, a woman I uh, had done some work with some years back, and she told me uh, that her mother got up every morning, no matter what, they, I remember that she said they lived in Pasadena and they had a living room with tall, tall windows, like floor to ceiling windows. And every morning the mother would get up and you know, get the kids up and when they'd all sort of stagger in to, to breakfast, she would swing open all the drapes and say, everyone, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And they said, we heard that every year for decades and we were not about rejoicing and being glad. We were kids. We wanted our Frosted Flakes. You know, we were not into... But the wonderful thing we realized is that over years, our mother was programming us. Our mother was training our minds. There were two, there were two daughters. And she said, and now both of us do that all the time. That we think that way when, every morning when we get up. Because of what our mother did all those years ago when we were little, we start every day off, we think, on the right foot. I love that. I thought that was just the greatest story. So here's another little story about this woman, this mom. She was extraordinary. She had um, Alzheimer's and had to go into a home. And um, at an earlier time, she and her husband traveled a lot for his business. And, um, and they always stayed in very, very nice places, uh, usually the Ritz-Carlton. So when this woman went into an Alzheimer's home, her daughters would go and see her and they'd say, oh, mommy, how's everything here? How's everything? Are they treating you well? And the woman said, honest to God, my mother picked up Jell-O with fruit cocktail and she said, oh dear, everything is the best at the Ritz. Her mother thought she was at the Ritz-Carlton because her consciousness was she couldn't imagine that she would be any place less than that. Isn't that spectacular? I thought, oh my God, if I had to have that experience, I want to be at the Ritz too, you know? And, and, they, said, and, and, she, and, and they said this was not a one-time thing. She maintained this because they said another time, we said, oh, mommy, how's the help here? How are they treating you? And she says, oh dear, you know the Ritz. They hire the best people. And so in her experience, as awful as it looked to her children, their mom's consciousness was in such a place that she couldn't it couldn't even enter into her awareness that she could be someplace where she wasn't treated beautifully, lovingly, respectfully, where she wasn't brought the most wonderful food in the world. I mean, and, and this was not the Ritz where she was. But in her mind, and this is what counts, it absolutely was. You know, so we all have areas that we want to see improve, you know, but, but focus on what's good right now. Because I believe that several things happen. Focusing on what's good right now expands that. Because we teach what you focus on increases. What you give your attention to expands. Right? And so probably for every one of us here, even though I know there are challenges, more is working than not working. And we want to give thanks for all of that. All the while holding that we have a bigger vision for our life that God gives to us through the realm of ideas. You know, those who, and those ideas are like the seeds that we become responsible for planting and fertilizing and watering and cultivating and ultimately harvesting. So God's part is God gives us the idea, the seed, and we do everything else with it. Our belief, our belief, our daily um, cultivating of consciousness is what lets that seed take root. See, we see other people with their visions coming true, and, and, and that's a wonderful thing. And, and we have to have the consciousness that recognizes that other people's success 
actually blesses us. Because simply say, gee, love like that, that they have, that's for me. Oh my God, a career like that, that's for me. Oh my God, a home like that, that's for me. That way, there's no jealousy in there. You're just telling the universe, yep, that's where I'm headed. That's what I'm interested in. Because the same God, the same creative spirit is in them that is in you. You know, so I think that your subconscious mind is always receiving and acting on the messages that you give it. That's what we teach. So every day, all things are working together for good in my life. I absolutely believe that that is the truth. So now as we go into a little bit of inner work, I want to start with something that Ernest Holmes wrote. So if you turn your attention in with me, inward with me for a moment, we'll just be quiet with these words, that the peace of God is at the center of my being. I am conscious of this peace. I enter into this peace. I am surrounded by this peace. This peace moves out from me in all directions. It calms the troubled waters of my experience. It heals everything it contacts. There is nothing but peace. I rejoice in this peace. I permit this peace to enter my soul, to fill me with calm, to inspire me with confidence. I know that this peace goes before me and makes perfect, plain, and straight my way. So established in this consciousness of peace and knowing our oneness with God, I further know we are all connected with each other. And in this peaceful consciousness, I speak the word for us that we do indeed have a vision for our life. And I know for all of us, one way or another, that vision is for God to express more fully and more freely by means of each and every one of us. And we are open, willing vessels for spirit's expression. I know that the good of God is manifest right where we are because God is a good to which there is no opposite, infinite good. And we receive it. We would include in our prayer today our family members and friends, our parents and children, all of those we love and hold near and dear. And we know that they too exist in the infinite mind of God, that God's thoughts fill them and guide them, and that peace and harmony and right action are the order of the day. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in, where there is the appearance of so much discord and duality. We claim the unity of God, that there is only one, and that one is love, it's whole, it's perfect. And so with a full heart, I give thanks that this is the truth for each and every one of us. And so it is with a full heart that I release this word into God's perfect law. I know it's done, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. Oh,